Hey everyone, welcome to the Mile High webinar. I'm Dr. Daniel Knowles and I am with a person that I'm getting to know better and better and I'm super excited to be interviewing, which is Heidi Farrow. Welcome, Heidi. Hey, thank you. Thanks for having me again today. Woo! Let's Woo do this thing. Woohoo! Heidi's going to be with us in, in August at Mile High, August 22nd to 24th. Um, www.milehighchiro.org. You can get registered there. And she was there last year in yeah. attendance and uh, with a, a whole bunch of people in a team. And I am uh, such a fan of you, Heidi, because, you know, I have learned the hard way and the good way how important teams are in chiropractic. And so many chiropractors you know, don't, don't give enough to their team, don't support their team, and don't, don't bring their team to events. And that's why, you know, I'm like, you bring your te a whole team to Mile High because you need an on-purpose, on-fire team. Yes. What, what, why do you feel, why do you put so much energy into team building? Well, I, you know, in my experience, I've been doing this for a, a lot of years, 15, 16 years. And in my experience, everybody, every team or every office wants to grow, right? Every year they want to grow 10, 20, whatever, 30%. And so that's a wonderful goal. But the ones that really actually make it happen are the ones that do work together as team, not as doctor and these are my staff and our doctors and these are just staff or team, you know, they come to work and, you know, we're all here. But the ones that really work off each other, train with each other, go to the seminars, you know, and, and after last year, Mile High is the perfect seminar because not all of them are great for all team to go to. Some, I mean, every seminar is good, but, you know, the differences. Right, and I know. So, yeah, you know, and so ultimately it's worth the value and the, and the, and the investment in that. Um, but the difference is that if you invest in your team and you're training with your team and you're inspiring your team and they're inspiring you, you are going to grow leaps and bounds. It's amazing what happens. Yeah, absolutely. And I've been on the, I've, I've been there where the team has been the wind beneath your wings and like you're just, everything's easy and moving. And I've been there when it's the complete opposite. I, and you're just it is both. It is both. Yeah, because it's bringing you down. Now, yeah. for people to know you a little bit better, and you're going to be doing two hours of team training at Mile High, which I am so psyched okay. for. Um, okay. How did you find your way into chiropractic? So people get to know who you are. Sure, sure. Well, you know, I started in chiropractic uh, a, a long time ago. I think I was 18 years old, 18 and a half, if I'm correct. Um, and I kind of fell upon it where I was, I, I was a country girl from northern Wisconsin. And I moved to the city. You know, young, get out of the house, and I'm out of here, right? Right. And I, I moved to St. Paul area where it was a big city for me, but it was still St. Paul. I never went over the bridge, ever went over the bridge to Minneapolis. I mean, that was the scary zone, right? Right, right. So one day I was looking for a position or a job, and I found the chiropractic office position looking for, looking for a CA or assistant. And I finally just said, okay, I'm going to do it. And I went over the bridge, and I went over to Minneapolis. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I did this whole big thing that was huge for me. And, um, and I, I got interviewed, and, and it was the funniest thing, because I got interviewed, and I got good energy, right? And I'm, I'm kind of a schmoozer. I know what to say and how to do it, but you know, you're young. And so I show up there with a, a little sweater on and a pair of jeans that had holes in the knees. And I'm thinking to myself, going, what was I thinking? You know, but, uh, but she said, the d Dr. Nola Gale was her name. She said that, you know, you just had that something extra special that I overlooked that this time. And it was fun because I, you know, I, I got hired and, and my doctor said that you're going to get your life out of working here. And, you know, at that time, I'm like a CA going, oh, yeah, yeah, how much am I going to make? And, and <laughs> And do I have to work till, you know, but, uh, but ultimately it was amazing and awesome experience. And of course I, you know, learned a ton, but I think about it now, if I knew what I knew then, now, uh, now what I, you know, back then, whew, we'd be seeing, we saw a thousand a week then, I, I think we'd be 1500 or more. Wow. And so it was an awesome practice and uh, we grew it to that. So it wasn't like it walked into that, but it was fun. Uh, and how many years were you there that first? I was there about eight and a half. Yeah, wow. Buddy. And then I got recruited by the College of Chiropractic at Northwestern, which, woo, was an experience. Uh -huh. um, and uh, very political, very, you know, don't say subluxation. And, uh, you know, but I had fun teaching the students how to run a practice. I made them take rounds at the front desk. I made them take rounds in the billing office. I made them take rounds out here and do spinal care classes. And, and you know, so it was fun for me and fun for them. And, um, you know, even though they didn't think it was fun at the time, now they thank me. I, I still hear it to some degree. 
Mm-hmm. So, but I only spent that much time there, about a year, and then I uh, carousated with uh, Dr. Ward, Charlie Ward. Wow, awesome. Yeah, yeah. you got to watch out for saying that S word. That can be... Yeah, you know, I know. You know it's dangerous. Right? <laughs> it's, it's dangerous, but I told, I used to tell the research department that, hey, if you don't, if you don't, you know, come to my class, if you don't like it, we'll talk about changing it, but come on over and let's hear it. They'd never show up, so I'd keep doing what I did. <laughs> so it was it was fun but but it's an experience you know everything's an experience and you are you know you are all over the place i watched like you were just in georgia right and, yep, I just enjoyed uh, it for you're clients. Train, you're training teams everywhere and yep. you're on so many different programs helping chiropractors what is your why what fuels you to do so much and contribute so much um to help chiropractors thrive well you know, I, I feel like uh, people ask me long ago why I didn't become a chiropractor. And I say, you know, I, I would have been a great one. The, uh, the communication that comes out of my mouth, the way I can talk to people in that way. I, I love to get my hands on people too, like you guys do, but in a different way. Mm-hmm. And so I tell them that, you know, I thought about it. I was going to do it. But then I said to myself that, you know what, what I do or what they need from me is just as important or more important than being a chiropractor at this point. And I can make a, a, a mortal effect, you know, and that's really what I wanted to do was to leave such an effect on people, on teams, that they would remember me in some way or form, you know, in history, I guess. And, uh, and so that was kind of my goal, and, and I wanted to do it, I want to do this because when I see teams, and I work with them like I do, and, you know, on average, our clients get 20, you know, 18 to 25% growth each year, it seems, mm-hmm. uh, when I do all the numbers. And it's fun because I think it's because we take the hard work away from it. We make them a team. We, we tell them what to do, but we give them what to do. So they don't have to think. They just have to do. Act mm-hmm. and do. Act and do. And then, you know, out of acting, they become, right? Right. So, so we just work on that process. But I love seeing the differences that they get when, uh, like yesterday, I had a Dr. Mike over in uh, Virginia on the East Coast. You know, we've been working on his day one, his day two. And, you know, they're not used to communicating, right? They're not used to doing this. They don't get the authority to tell people you need to be here, you know, and he starts doing that now and he gets real excited and he has in six months changed his practice. He can't believe it. He's just thrilled with himself and that's why I do it, I think. Awesome. I mean, that's, yeah. Awesome. And you know, that what you, one of the things you said is something I say every time I do it, I do a group hiring meeting in my office when, yeah. I, when I interview um, as the first step of the interview process and I say it at that point is that we need someone who understands that how you answer the phone and what you do on the phone is beginning the healing process, number one, yes. and number two, just as important as what I do with my hands. That's right. You know, is, it's almost, I mean, I hate to say this in a bad way, but it's almost more important because if they, yeah. don't do, if they don't do what they do on the phone, if they don't know how to schmooze and answer the questions correctly and handle the patient right to get them in the door, you don't have a chance to put your hands on them. Absolutely. So, totally. You know, so it's, uh, we work on the phone so much, and it's amazing to me that I, I work on it with like CAU, but I work on it with doctors too and their team because they don't see it. They don't realize they oversight the phone. You know, They just think, oh, the phone, oh, yeah, the phone. But when they dig in and we start role-playing through it and they see how – the recording sounds of their team when I record them secretly, mm-hmm. they're like, holy crap, right? right. And then they're, they're, they're on it and they're in it and they were testing and we're testing because we need to. You know, what you don't inspect, you can't expect, right? Right. And it's the same. And that's just the phone, let alone initial oh, yeah. visits, report of findings, or finances, what to say when, and the day to day. Yeah. If you don't, if you don't have a solid team, you always feel like you're, you know, fighting an uphill battle. That's exactly so, exactly. Yeah. So it's, yeah. I'm so grateful for what you do because you know the chiropractic angels that uh, chiropractors depend upon um, are so vital. They're the unsung heroes in yeah. chiropractic. Yeah, you know? which is, is a good point to make, and you know I think it's a good point to make that the doctors. Um, any of them need to remember how to appreciate their team and how to do fun things that just make them feel great instead of usually what do we hear? We hear all the negative, but never the positive. So, and you know, we have both, but right, right. And, and sometimes you do that. We uh, yeah. doctors will go, Oh, you missed that. And you missed yeah. this. And hey, you, you said that. that. And you shouldn't say that and do this and do this and never in front of patients. But right. you know, instead of catching them doing something right. Yes, exactly. And if they just focused on that or left a little card on their computer in the morning that said, you are the Brock Bomb man, I love you, you're great, or whatever, I mean, that would make their day and they'd get so much more performance out of their team because of that feeling. Because women are all about feeling, you know. We need that, that foo-foo good feeling. Just tell me I'm great and I'll be great for you. <laughs> and, uh, and so they need to do that and, and work it a little bit more um, and they'll see a result out of that too because people just want to feel respect. They want to know that you appreciate them and that they, their hard work does not go unseen. 
So let's uh, let's let, that was a really good gem there with leaving the card on 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 the computer. I love that. And yeah, let's cool. let's let's give some people that are watching this a little meat and potatoes. Okay. What would be some good you know one two or three tips would be good team things for them to do? Okay. Well. They should be doing team building, which means that during their team training, because I usually do meeting, training, one week, meeting, meeting one week, training the next. So they train for a good hour and a half, you know. But during the training, they should do some icebreakers that are really fun, team ones, because they get to know themselves and they get to know their team and they laugh together, enjoy it. And it really breaks ice to open up the training. I think, I mean, I think those are fun and good. Um, I also think that they just need to take the time, we all do in our lives, but in the practice especially, to listen. Just listen. We're so busy, we walk right by them. They're talking to us, and we walk right by them, you know. And I, and we're all guilty, you know. We do that. Mm -hmm. But um, but I think we need to acknowledge more, like we just said, and, uh, and and have structure. You know, a team needs structure, and a lot of times there's some doctors that are very structured, and they love that. But there's most of them that are very disorganized yeah. and uh, and and cluttered. And you know, you and I both know it takes no energy to have distraction. We're like right. ping pong balls, right? right? But it takes a lot of energy to have focus. And so right. you have to work hard at it, but you need to have structure because your team's going to drop away and drop out because they can't handle it. So, um, you know, those are, those are some things that I think are important uh, little tidbits, but just take them to lunch, you know, have a birthday lunch this month and everybody's birthday is no matter what time of the year it is, you know, we do it. So uh, <laughs> things like that are fun. You know, uh -huh. I just like doing crazy stuff. Well, I, I think I think we need a little bit about that because when yeah. people are really when a practice is really going on all cylinders, people mm. work hard. Yes, and you know, you, uh, all, all kinds of good companies will have those kinds of things where they team build, yes. where they have camaraderie, they do something fun, and chiropractors tend to forget it. Yeah. Yeah, and the seminars do help that, but you know, in a, and, and that's one thing you should do, but you know, in a higher volume practice, which can be, you know, anywhere from 250, 300 to up, you know, you do not want to lose a CA at the front desk. I mean, she'll be dragging down the water, you know, get me water. She, right. you know, they can't handle it. So they, you need to, you don't want to lose that because you lose that and replace the CA at the front desk of a higher volume practice. Ooh, yeah. it's not good. Yeah. You know, it's hard because not many people can handle that. They grow into that. Right. Right, totally. So um, let's let's wrap up with a couple things. Let me ask okay. you: w Tell our audience what are some things you're going to be covering at mm. Mile High to, yeah. to and why they should bring their team and get two hours with you. Yeah. Okay. Good. Well, let's see. I, I've thought about it a little, putting the itinerary, so I don't have it all. But I think um, one of my specialties is you know kind of being that queen of procedure, if you will. Uh -huh. So I definitely want to spend a little time on maybe the top. Two things, like you talked about the telephone, but, but one of the biggest things is what to say when. You know, you said telephone, but what to say when is, is so important. And I think we need to have some fun game and drill them and work them a little bit because an example would be patients heading out the door, and how many times does this happen? Oh, yeah, I'll just call you. Okay, I'll just call you Thursday. I'll call you next week. And they're out the door. Right. And 98% of the people cannot handle They uh, uh, Okay, you know, and they're done. Mm -hmm. And as Martini used to say, if they're not on your schedule, you lost them. Right. right? And and that's kind of true. So what I try to teach them and what to say when is say, hey, Judy, don't bother. You know what? I got you Wednesday at forks. I know you like it. Call me if it doesn't work. I just saved you time. We'll see you then. Boom. They're going to go, uh, okay. They're not going to know what to say. So they'll be left in the other bar and you win. And it works almost every time. So yeah. even learning some of those little what to say whens. And then I love to do some education and marketing, just a, a little of both, because education is our role mm -hmm. and um, everybody's role. But I think the CAs, mm -hmm. many offices, think it's the doctor's role. Mm -hmm. They do. It. We just are here to be here, you know, or work. Right. work. Right. Um, but it's really our role to lead it from gadgets to, you know, hand a pair of handcuffs and say, here, you know, head on back. Uh, Dr. Daniel will need these in room two, you know? Patients are like, uh, okay. <laughs> and they're pink fuzzy, right? I mean, have fun with it. It's, it's fun that way. Um, so education, marketing a little, you know, who, what doctor does not want their team to ask for referrals in that groovy way, right? Right. Uh, you know, not, not a desperate, not a whatever, but a, just a fun way. And so I'll probably tie in a few of those things too. So make it a little well-rounded and then I love to send people home with stuff so that they have tools to work with right out of the gate. Awesome. Awesome. Yep. So I guess Great. that would be some of it. Great. That, that sounds awesome. It, I mean, and again, the times when our office has grown the most is when seminar after seminar we brought our teams yes. and they had a good person, you know, helping them out and they were on conference calls, you know, yes. regularly and, and guided, coached or something, you know. Right. And that's that's why what you do is so so important and yeah. so and valuable. I, 
I think you and I would agree as a coach yourself, um, as coaches, we, your team needs to be coached as much as you, the doctors need to be coached. And right. so, you know, a lot of times the docs come back from seminars or coaching and go, okay, we're doing this. Okay, we're going to do this. All right, we're going to do this. And team's like, yeah, yeah, that'll last a week, you know, and right. they need to, you know, be as guided as, as, as they are. And sometimes that is seminars and that's fine. That can handle that. Sometimes it's more, Right. but, uh, but good step to start would be to, uh, to sign up for Mile High and get your butts there because it is the perfect blend of philosophy and power like no other. I mean, it's, I've been to a ton. It's like no other. Yeah, and, and I'm so psyched you're going to be there. Bring, you know, Wisconsin will be in the house. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to my team too, actually, my rest of my team, Mark, Dr. Mark Mao and, and Kasha, and, yeah, and we're going to bring everybody along. So it, It's going to be awesome. So yeah. I look forward to seeing you there. I look forward to connecting Thanks. with you plenty between now and then yep. and uh, following up with you more. And, uh, you know, I'm grateful. I know you're going to – where, where else can people find you this year? Just And how yes. can people connect yep. with you? Well, they can connect with me on my website, and that's just CairoAdvance, with an E, dot com. Okay. Uh, next weekend, I'm in the CCA in California, San Diego, teaching. And then the weekend after that, I'm in Parker, Charlottesville, I think, North, South Dakota. Awesome. So South, South, South Carolina, excuse mm -hmm. me, um, South Dakota. I'm not going there. Um, and so I've got quite a few seminars coming up, which are, are fantastic, because I love to share. And, um, uh, but they can get a hold of us via the website or Call me for a consult. We'd love to sit down and talk. We'd love to chit-chat. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you for all you do. Thank you thank for inspiring you. CAs everywhere to touch more lives and You're teams welcome. to touch more lives. Because, yeah. And, Give me uh, a team. Have... <laughs> Just be a cheerleader here, you know. <laughs> team. 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 Not time out. Time out and team. Game, game face. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> we just had a seminar game face. It was fun. Yeah, yeah. I saw the pictures of that. That was great. It was. It was so. fun. Yeah, yeah. We got, we got Roberto Monaco coming in September, so he's going to be awesome. Oh, I love Roberto. He is so great, isn't he? Yes. He is, totally. I went to his program. So. Good. Well, I'm I, going to I, I'm, I'm grateful for you. Look forward to seeing you yeah. again. Thank you for taking your awesome. valuable time out to be with us, and we'll see you August 22nd. I'll be there. <laughs>